Cuphead certainly isn't the easiest game ever, but today we'll be checking out the fastest Cuphead speedrun category, and how you too can beat all the bosses in the game as fast as possible. It's been a while since my last Cuphead video, and with the new Netflix show and finally a release date for the DLC, this week has been all Cuphead for me. And really quick, I wanted to give a shout out to my channel sponsor G Fuel. If you'd like to stock up or try some yummy G Fuel for the first time, check out my link in the description and use code TETRA at checkout, which is boosted up to 30% off your order for the next few days. Anyways, smash like for a free sip of whatever's in Cuphead's head. It's probably G Fuel. Let's see how some runners were able to beat every boss in just over 17 minutes. Before we get to actually starting the run, a few things are necessary for this particular speedrun category that I decided to tackle here since it is the fastest. First things first, in order to make the boss fights as quick and easy as possible, this category has you playing on simple difficulty. Not what difficulty seekers like, I'm sure, but playing on simple reduces boss health, attack difficulty, and even removes some phases entirely from the fights. Secondly, if you want the fastest time possible in Cuphead, you'll need to be running the original pre-patch version of the game, as the 1.1 update to this game removed several exploits. I'm honestly not sure if it's still possible to get the pre-patch version on console, but if you have the game on Steam, you can easily revert back to it. Anyways, with that knowledge in tow, let's see how fast this game can be beaten. So the timer for this run starts as soon as you select and start a brand new save file. Then, right after skipping the initial cutscene, we can immediately see why the pre-patch version of this game is nice to run. So normally, when starting the game, you have to interact with Elder Kettle here and then go through the entirety of the tutorial segment. The tutorial doesn't take all too long and isn't that hard, heck, even my Twitch chat was able to beat it, but in the pre-patch version of Cuphead, you can skip the tutorial entirely by simply just pausing the game and then exiting to the map. Yeah, that's really all you have to do. Anyways, now finally outside, it's time to head off on our adventure. First, before we hit up any of the bosses, we need to get another weapon for Cuphead. So after talking to Apple Fella here for three easy coins, we head on into the first and only running gun stage of this speedrun, Forest Frolic. The main thing you want to focus on when speedrunning the stage is, well, speed. And how you achieve speed in this stage is basically to dash as much and often as you can. It's a bit tricky to time dashing with some of the enemies, but the time save can be pretty significant. Also, we'll need coins for the weapons ahead, so be sure to snag all the coins along the way. There is a cool speedrun trick in this stage too, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to pull it off after numerous attempts because I'm a big noob, but if you dash at just the right time before the acorn generator here, you can actually clip through the floor and then quickly skip that section to save a whole bunch of seconds. Anyways, now with 8 coins in hand, we can pay our pal Porkrine to visit for some supplies. For this run, the optimal weapons to get here are the Roundabout, which kind of acts like a boomerang, and the Lobber, which lobs. There's also a small trick you can do at the store to save some time by pressing the Accept and Exit button at the same time on the Roundabout vial thing, and then mashing the Accept button after that. If done correctly, you will be able to purchase both weapon upgrades as well as exit the shop in one smooth move. With our weapons upgraded, Cuphead's damage output is increased, and we can finally hit up the first boss, or I guess bosses, of the run, the Root Pack. Now here, let's talk about probably the most important glitch of this run, and the biggest reason to use the original pre-patch version of Cuphead, the Weapon Swap Glitch. So basically, to keep things short, when holding down the fire button, a given shot has its set fire rate. But in the original release, if you constantly swap your shot type, you essentially reset the fire rate, and by doing so, you essentially effectively double Cuphead's DPS, or damage per second. And this trick is crucial, and you'll see throughout this run just how helpful this damage increase can be. The fight here starts with the potato, and there's basically only one attack that you'll see. He'll spit out mud and worms, and yeah, just jump over them, keep blasting, and Mr. Potato Head here will be Mr. Potato Dead. <laughs> the next vegetable up, and the only other one we'll see since we're playing on simple, is the carrot. And here you kinda just wanna stand in the middle, aim up, and keep on blasting. If at this point you dodged all of the attacks from the potato, you should have enough health to not even need to dodge the carrot's attacks. So taking a hit is usually worth a time save here. And just like that, that's a wrap for the first fight. 
And just to highlight how helpful the weapon swap glitch is, here's a comparison of my two runs with and without using the glitch, and yeah, it's pretty significant. Ribian Croaks are up next, and this is definitely one of the easiest fights of the run. Basically, just keep shooting to the right, and when Croaks is spitting out fireflies, you can get nice and close to Ribby here for lots of damage. If you have any EX attacks saved up, dump them after Ribby rolls to the other side, and just like that, you should be done pretty quickly. The blue blob himself, Goopy, is up next, and this is another fight that's a breeze. You can't just shoot in the same direction for most of the fight, like the last one, but just jump around and try to hit Goopy as often as you can when he's jumping. He'll also stop to do his punch attack, but if you're close enough, you can just drop down to dodge it while still doing lots of damage. You can deal even more damage while he transforms to his final phase, and by that point, he should be pretty close to a... Next, we can finally unlock the airplane for Cuphead, and here there's another little trick you can do to save a few seconds. Now normally you have to fly over to the bottom right side of the page to progress, but just like with the Elder Kettle intro, here you can just exit to the map to save some time. And now onto the first airplane boss fight against Hilda Berg. Now this airplane fight is going to take a bit longer than any of the other ones since there's no weapon swap glitch that can be performed here yet, but with a few tricks you can still shave down your time. For this fight, you just want to keep fire on Hilda as often as you can, and use the rockets and nukes when you have them. There's also an easy little trick that you can do for some heavy rocket damage as well. Basically, whenever Hilda puffs up and lunges at you, instead of dodging the attack, you'll actually want to take a hit, and this is because you'll be lined up for the next attack. After she lunges, wait about one second before firing off an EX rocket. Now normally a rocket only hits an enemy up to like four times, but since the rocket has basically the same speed as Hilda and is traveling in the same direction, it will hit her numerous times on the way back for some heavy damage. If you manage to do this trick both times that she lunges at you before transforming, the rest of the fight isn't all too bad. Next we got Plant Boy himself, good old Cagney Carnation. In general, it's best to stay on the rightmost platform here and just keep blasting away. Plant Boy will also extend both on the top and bottom side at the start, so just aim accordingly, and other than that, yeah, it's pretty easy. Now on a normal run, Baroness Von Bonbon can be pretty annoying I find, but thankfully with the weapon swap glitch, the three minions at the start can be wrecked in no time at all. This fight has a bit of RNG as you'll randomly get three out of four possible minions here, at least in the simple difficulty. Gumball Bro, Waffle Buddy, Candy Corn Lad, or Discount Pac-Man Gobstopper here have a chance to spawn, and honestly, ideally you'll want to get everyone but the Candy Corn Guy, as I find him most difficult to track while he's constantly moving. The Gobstopper is pretty easy as he basically just chases you, Gumball Bro just runs back and forth here, yep, that's basically it, and the Waffle just floats around. Anyways, after dispatching whichever three minions you get, the Baroness will then start to blast you with her double barrel straw shotgun. The puffs she shoots can be pretty easily destroyed, so what I like to do is pretty much just stand underneath her, aim up, and blast away. Bada bing, bada boom, that's another boss down. Before moving on to the next fight, we can actually talk to this fella by the underpass here, and by doing so we actually get a second attack type for the airplane. And, yep, you guessed it, this now lets us do the weapon swap glitch in the plane levels. Now personally, I don't find the effect of this glitch on the plane levels nearly as much as the others, but it certainly does still help to shave off some time. Anyways, next up we got Wally Warbles. This I'd say is one of the easier air fights, as most of Wally's attacks are pretty easy to dodge. The best thing to do here is to parry the pink birds when you see them, and not blast them, which sometimes might be a bit tougher to do, but thankfully, Wally's feather attack is super easy to dodge in simple mode, and honestly, the most difficult part with this fight is with the baby bird at the end, because it can be pretty tough to dodge the spike eggs that circle him. Then next up is Jimmy the Great, and just like with the Baroness, here too, Jimmy's first attack has a random chance of being one of three different moves. Either he will launch some daggers at you, some cat scarab beetle things, or just random treasure. This time though, I don't find that any of these are particularly better or worse for this speedrun. Not much else to say about this fight, just keep on blasting and using the weapon swap glitch where you can, and here I find nukes are more useful than individual rockets, so I tend to save up for the nukes on this fight. After blasting up Cuphead here, that's half of the bosses in this game done, and in my most recent run, this was only less than 14 minutes in. 
Next up is Beppy. I hate this guy. Now this fight isn't particularly difficult, but I don't know, I just have troubles with it, especially in the last phase. Anyways, here Beppy starts off in his coaster and will just drive around. Basically just keep blasting him, but also try to jump around to also hit the ducks above, as they can still hurt you if you try to dash over Beppy's jump attacks. Now in the pre-patch version, you can actually skip the entire second phase of this fight, as there is a leftover off-screen hitbox just to the left of the screen, and if you blast it enough, the second phase just… won't happen. Unfortunately, this trick is on the more difficult side, as you have to do a lot of damage to Beppy to make it work, and I wasn't able to get it myself. The best I got was reducing the second phase to only like a fraction of a second, so I was still pretty happy with that. And now that brings us to the third phase, my least favorite. Beppy will drop down on either side of the stage and do one of two moves. A green horse will have him shooting out horseshoes that travel in a wave-like path, and a yellow horse will blast out horseshoes that you need to duck under and then find a gap to avoid. The yellow horseshoes always seem to get me since I always forget to duck down fast enough, so yeah, duck down fast enough and you should be fine. Grim Matchstick is up next, and this is, in my opinion, one of the harder boss fights in the regular difficulty. Thankfully, this isn't the regular difficulty, so here the fight isn't all too bad at all. Keep blasting him when he's on the right, and then switch when he flies to the left, and really, that's all there is to it. Like, I was able to do this fight in only like 34 seconds. Grim Matchstick is certainly no match for the Weapon Switch glitch. Rumor Honeybottoms is another fight that I find pretty difficult in regular difficulty, but here it's again incredibly easy. You can destroy the first bee cop with ease, blast the bee when she drops down either side of the screen, and then for the final phase she will always do this chain ball thing, but you can still damage her on the top section, so just stay up there and keep shooting and she'll be gone before the bullets have time to even buzz to you. Next is Dr. Call's Robot, who can be a bit tricky with all of his attacks, but if you destroy his parts in a certain order, it can be made a bit easier, I find. First, I always try to destroy the top laser dish thing, as I find it to be the most annoying attack. And with the weapon swap glitch here with the plane, you can take it out before it even has a chance to work. Then similarly, just blast out both the heart and gut sections to reveal the true heart within. I'd like to save up a nuke for the last heart to deal some heavy damage, and if any of the seeking missiles are near you, you can also use this explosion and invincibility frames to dodge them as well. Next we got Sally Stage Play, and this fight is honestly just as easy as Goopy from earlier. Just gotta track her when she jumps around, but she stays put several times so you can lay down lots of damage, especially in the orphanage section. I like to save up as many of my EX attacks for the last phase, and if you blast her fast enough, you can actually defeat her before her meteor and wave attack can even happen. The wartime mouse Werner Vermin is up next, and for the most part, the weapon switch glitch will do all the work here. The only two tricky parts can be when he launches out the bounce pads which you have to parry on to jump over his charge, and at the end when he's trying to burn you to a crisp, it can be tough to keep fire on him while also dodging his flames, as well as going to where you need to be in order to avoid his moving up or down. Thankfully, the bottle caps on both sides of the screen don't move in simple difficulty, so that's one less thing to worry about. Oh, and you don't even need to worry about the cat in the back at all, as here, that entire phase isn't seen in simple. Now coming up to the last couple of bosses here, first is Captain Brinybeard. Now this one is a bit more tricky with the weapon switch glitch, at least with the lobber power up. I'd almost recommend switching it to the default shot for this fight as you can just stand on the bottom right and keep blasting. Otherwise with the lobber, often the lobs won't reach and you'll have to like awkwardly keep jumping which I find can be a bit risky. We also got some more RNG in this stage as what sea animals the captain summons is random. None are particularly that bad, but I find the dogfish to be the worst you can get, especially if you're jumping on the right side, and the squid can be the best, since it doesn't even damage you, it just impairs your vision. Anyways, another fight down. Now onto the final flying fight of the run is Calamaria. Much like Captain Brinybeard, which sea animal she pulls up is again random. It can either be the turtle guy, a bunch of puffer fish, or Squirty McSquirter. Yeah, I make up names a lot for this game, but no, that's actually his real name. Anyways, ideally you get the Pufferfish since they're pretty easy to dodge, and some will be pink, which you can parry for more EX attacks. Squirty is probably the worst one since his jet of water can push you into the ghost pirate fellas, and that's no good. 
There's not much else to say about this fight, honestly. Just avoid the Medusa Beam if you can to not get stunlocked, and I like to have some rockets saved for the end here since they can both damage Kala and also destroy some of her eels to make the bullet hell section a bit more manageable. And finally, we're on to the Phantom Express. Thankfully, at least in terms of speedrunning, this fight isn't some crazy climax or anything, as the first two phases you can basically just stand still and keep shooting. Literally a no-brainer, and both can be done in only a few seconds. The final phase is a bit trickier, especially with a lob attack, since again, the lobs just don't reach as far, so you might have to actually move in this stage and get under each respecting head that spawns. And after both are defeated, that's another knockout for the books. And with all of those bosses defeated, it's time to head on down to Inkwell Hell and into King Dice's Casino to finally... Oh, never mind, I guess that's time. Yup, in the simple category and probably the most anticlimactic finish to a speedrun, you don't actually get to fight King Dice or any of his cronies, or hell, even the devil at all. So, like I said earlier, technically you don't fight all of the bosses in this game, but hey, that's all there is to this category. Now, I was able to get a time of just over 25 minutes on only my second day learning this speedrun, and I'm sure even if you're new to this game, you could probably beat this time easily. Now, I don't think my 25 minutes is all too bad, but the current world record held by Yuka has a crazy time of just over 17 minutes. And pretty much everyone in the top 30 places has a time under 20 minutes, which I think is nuts. As you've seen, there aren't any crazy game-breaking exploits in this game, outside of the weapon switch glitch, of course, so the top players have just really optimized the boss fights to defeat them in less time than it takes to warm up your coffee in the microwave. And that's speedrunning Cuphead all bosses simple. Although each individual fight isn't all too difficult, I think the difficulty here rests with stringing all 16 boss fights together in a single run without dying. Even just one death can cost a minute, which, when records are less than 20 minutes, can be a big deal. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out my other speedrun videos, like the one I made on Hello Neighbor. Subscribe to find your way back for future videos and more Cuphead stuff when the DLC rolls around. And as always, I will see you in a bit.